So to the crisis in the Labour Party, where everyone is keeping their powder dry, waiting for the volcano to erupt and for the lava to flow, waiting to see how low the other side will sink. And even as they're all banging their heads against a brick wall, the smart ones are trying to find a loose brick in the wall, which, if they can remove it, could bring the whole edifice of their opponents tumbling down. Nowhere is this internecine conflict more apparent than in Imo State, where the National Working Committee, led by Julius Habure, insists that Senator Ethan Echonu is the party's genuine and undisputed INEC recognized candidate for the governorship election in November. Never mind the fact that another faction, led by Lamidi Apapa, is also insisting that Senator Achono is not the party's candidate. So, steadily, progressively, the political crescendo in Imo State is building towards that off-season governorship election in November, with a divided Labour Party ranged against the incumbent APC and the main opposition PDP, as well as a gaggle of 14 other parties. So with all the candidates fortifying their positions ahead of that mighty battle in a state already battered by a tempest of separatist agitation and besieged by self-serving politicians casting a long shadow over the state, even as body bag after body bag is laid out, what implications will that race have for security in the state and for the tale of despair of the people there? With more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by the INEC recognized governorship candidate of the Labour Party in Imo State, Senator Ethan Achornu. Senator, thank you very much indeed for coming in. It's my pleasure. Charles. Very busy period for you. Obviously, the campaigns, um, trying to get your house in order. And so we appreciate your coming in to talk to us. Can you provide some context? to the dispute within the Labour Party that's been playing out in the courts, apparently, and involves your candidacy in Emo State. What's your assessment of how things stand just now? Uh, it's funny, really, because um, it's, the it's the press that is playing up this crisis. There is no crisis in the Labour Party, because I had expected that when it first, uh, when the news first broke, that they would have investigated to find out the true situation of things and clear the air on it, because we have come several times to dispel those rumors. But it's the APC government in Imo State, like they are fueling that crisis, because we had a, a primary election. I imagined came first, Lincoln Nugunewe came second, the entire general. Then the other ones that crashed out, one of them took another one to court. They didn't even sue me. I wasn't a party to the uh, suit. And then they cleverly uh, su uh, f served the Apapa faction of the Labour Party. And one claiming that he is the candidate, not the other one, so that there could be a ruling, a judgment that says, no, it's not you, it is this person. So they cleverly avoided me. So by the time we found out, it was already late. So we, had, we, we tried to join. They refused. They said it was very late for us to join. And then even Lebo, the party, tried to uh, represent themselves that the other man is not the correct, uh, the lawyer there is not representing the Labour Party. So the Labour Party was not represented as well. So immediately they refused my joinder. They went to town and said that, and then the, the judge declined jurisdiction and dismissed the matter. The judgment is there. And the press, they have seen the copies, they have copies of all those judgments. But still, every time, they will publish the news that, oh, uh, Senator Tan, I don't know, is no more. <laughs> I don't know what is fueling that news. 
who is sponsoring it. It's being heavily sponsored. Well, nobody's certainly sponsoring us. <laughs> We're making, that's why we've got you here. Yes. And we will so, also give a chance to the other side yes, to come no, and they, present. What, and, we, and they've come on a rise as what well. What I actually uh, believe should have been done mm. is to investigate it and tell the public the truth. Well, I mean, the, Not because I'll come and say APC will now come. I mean, the other faction will go, no, no, we are the authentic Labour Party. And then they just be going, this is psychological warfare. Let me tell you what is going on. So the beneficiary, of course, will be the APC uh, government in power. It's because people are now saying, ah, oh, if we vote for one armed general, that's what they call me, I go to Aga. If, they, <laughs> if we vote for one armed general now, you're, you're yes, a funny dude. yes, they will take the thing away from him at right. the Supreme Court. Hey, oh my God, we don't want to waste our vote. That's just the situation they want to create. They are simulating the belief right and how yes. are you countering that assuming that like is I'm the here, case that's the only thing we can do ex right. except the press now will come out and say look this is the current situation you are the first person who has uh, called me the INEC recognized candidate which means you have made your invest yeah, investigation. Yeah, well, to be fair, Arise has called you that. When? Consistent on Saturday. I mean... Uh, but I wasn't there. When I was well, there, yeah, they but, didn't but call your, me. Your, the lawyer who mm. was there, I mean, um, on, on this week with yes. um, Sumner Samba, you, you were called the INEC recognized. Yes. So, I mean, okay. you know, let, let that, me give you a perfect called. example yeah. of, of this scam. It's a big scam. Mm. Okay, when we when we now when they went to appeal court now, so we also tried to join from appeal court. Appeal court declined, so we proceeded to the Supreme Court to challenge that uh, the uh, judgment of the appeal mm. court that we shouldn't join. So you know what you know what happened when uh, the judgment now came out, the appeal court clearly said it was even part of the judgment. Now why are we bothering that the, even the judgment is in our favor? That we shouldn't bother that the case was dismissed. And they also they only dismissed it at appeal. So asking us why we are bothering to even hmm. try to join, that it didn't make any sense. So what did we do? We went and withdrew the case from Supreme Court. Immediately we withdrew it. They went to town. That Supreme Court has ruled <laughs> that there was a judgment. It's unbelievable. Well, you have accused the La Media Papa led faction of the Labour Party of being sponsored by the incumbent APC government in Emo State to try to create division That's what within the Labour Party, yes. even as they insist, as we mentioned, that there is a court judgment that has effectively prevented you from contesting the governorship election in November. I mean, what exactly? is the legal status of your candidacy as clearly as you can put it. I mean, I know you've, you've kind of mentioned it now, but every time this news comes up, I mean, they, they were on a rise just over the weekend, and they were submitting documents from... The, the, the documents apparent here, documents just read from, what, from, read from, this the, from the Supreme Court? From the Supreme Court. Can, I mean, I, I, I don't have it in it? front of me, but I mean, uh -huh. th these are documents that, that appear, certainly no, from no, their the, perspective, the document to be authentic. Sent you, they sent you was correct, because I had it, they sent it to me from my rise. Mm. It clearly stated that the case was withdrawn. That's all it said. Right. And then, we went, but for the avoidance of doubt, there is no faction in Labour Party. The constitution of Labour Party is very, very clear that one person cannot sit down and remove the national chairman of Labour Party at all. It's not tenable in law. Then, assuming he, he, you remove him, you must replace him, so, so long as his tenure has not been completed, mm. you must replace him from so, with somebody from his geopolitical zone. Do you understand? So there is no faction. It's just people who lost out. Right. But given that you know, all this, as you yourself pointed out, yes. might be confusing voters um, as they seek clarification of who the flag bearer is. I mean, how does the Labour Party and you move on from here? How does the party repair this dented public image that appears to be almost out of control. No, no, it's not. You see, in Imo State, mm. maybe here, we have been campaigning, we have been going around assuring people. Mm. If the people in Imo, do you know, the pro they even know, in fact, it's even to our advantage. 
because the people in Imo now they are gaining more confidence. Right. They are seeing that the government of the day is rattled. They even know who they so they know who they suspect is sponsoring this rumor because a lot of them now know it's just mere rumor because this thing has been explained thoroughly, effectively. We've been going around the local governments. We are doing word consultations everywhere. Imo is on fire now. The political atmosphere is very tense. I can imagine. Yes, people are coming out in their numbers now. They are no more afraid. We are reassuring them that this time around, nobody is going to tamper with their votes. Nobody is going to do that. Imo lights are standing up. You see what is happening in Abia. What Alex is doing already has emboldened them. The resistance is growing. Mm. Yes. Well, well, let's turn away from the internal problems of the Labour Party and assume yes. that as you are the INEC recognized candidate, and I looked at that INEC list again, your mm -hmm. name is still there, yes. you will contest the election in November against Samuel, Samuel Anyangwa of the PDP and Governor Hopus Odimo of the APC. Both parties have held power in Imo State and have a solid base. Uh, but you and the Labour Party are the new kids on the block, you, yep. you could say. I mean, how are you planning to take on these two powerhouses? What have you got in your armory to challenge them effectively? <laughs> As a matter of fact, they have done the campaigning for me. Hmm. How many years of APC governance? Look at what it has brought them. Hunger, poverty, insecurity. Imo is almost like Somalia. There are warlords everywhere. Yo, are you one of the warlords? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I have to ask. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> <laughs> but you said there are warlords everywhere. There are. And if you're there taking so on them, them, you mm -hmm. must have something in your armory to take on them. <laughs> As a matter of fact, no, no, no. You see, the, the point is this. It's the situation, Charles, is unbelievable see dead people everywhere. A lot of people don't go home into Olo any longer. You have a sitting governor. Then people from his senatorial zone, they don't go home. They do more burials in Olo mm. zone. No traditional weddings in Olo zone. Do you understand me? But why is that happening now? And how no, that, do you the... intend to address that no. if you become governor? Well, God. It started the moment this governor has in power. That's when all these things Yeah, but it's not like. just, I mean, it, ha it happened in other parts of the Southeast. No, so it wasn't it's just coming. limited that, that, that's to the major Imo problem. State. Right. The major problem is that they are being exported from Imo, from the same location. It's from the same location that they're attacking Anambara, from the same location that they move and attack Enugu. You know, Oki, Okigwe, is, Okigwe is at the center, epicenter of this whole thing, my senatorial zone. It's from there that these guys move out, attack Enugu attack Anambara, attack Abia, attack Ebony. But when you say these guys, who are you talking about? We, Who's we, doing no, the attack? Unknown government. Nobody knows who they are. Right. That's the problem. Charles, this is a small area. I don't understand how a government that has the DSS, that has the military, that has the police, that has the civil defense, cannot surround that patch and take it over. Right. Now, when you see b uh, bunkering activity, they'll use helicopter, go and destroy people's houses, bomb people's houses. But they, they wouldn't near that forest. So, you see, something is wrong. Something mm. is fishy. So, you don't think it's got anything to do with IPOB? Not, IPOB has denied it several times. Mm. I don't see IPOB doing something and they, will, and they will deny it. They have denied it. They say they don't have a hand in it. So, who are they? And why is government not confronting mm. them frontally? That is a very big question. And look, let me tell you. Look at the soldiers. The okay, Charles, let me ask you a question. Police stations were destroyed along that stretch. Eh? Government has not raised a finger to fix them so that policemen can come back there and maintain law and order. What does that tell you? I, Nijdenani Machono, I offered to fix them. I even I bought land to relocate the one in the member no my local government. I started fixing the area command. Eh? They came and dynamited it. 
a place where a poli some policemen were killed when it was attacked. I called on some leaders from YouTube to assist me. Let's fix their own as well. They were all willing to do that. But the plan was this, that we should fix the area command from there. So they will give us like 30 men. I approached the Inspector General of Police. So one very intelligent officer came and told me, I said, please, we can't come here because you're wasting your money. The only way we can come here is if they give us an armored personnel career so we can stay in it while your contractors are working. We'll protect your contractors. And they showed me what to do to secure the place. And I included that in the design. So I now approached the IG, from IG. He gave go ahead that, yes, you know, that, uh, because I realized that they had APCs that are dilapidated that need to be fixed. Nine of them. I offered to fix them with my money, Charles. So only for me to come, I approached Innocent. Innocent charged me 180 million. I, then when I, he realized that I was doing this from my own personal resources, he considered 20 and said he would fix them for 160. I immediately paid 100 million to Nigerian police. Do you know what happened? They fixed um, five of the APCs. I now demand, because the plan was, I'll use five to protect Okigwe senatorial zone. I'll leave four for Olu zone, because those, these are the worst hit areas. But I mean, Olu is worse than Okigwe, but it's not my senatorial zone, it's the governor's uh, senatorial zone. And I'm not, I don't have any uh, security votes. These are my personal resources. They gave me only one. You know what excuse they gave? That they don't have drivers. That's what they told me, the commander of the mobile police force that was supposed to be driving. They said they don't have drivers. And then even the one they gave me, they were now using it to patrol the entire place, not even to station it to fix that police station. Because the plan was to fix police station so that men will stay there. Because once they do that, they will be, informants will begin to come and tell them, give them information on how to secure the entire area. Then I will now fix, oh, I forgot. I even bought a building for the Yemen Banno police station. A building. They said it, it was inside. Okay? And so I had to now buy the uh, massive plot of land on the road at a very high cost. If I tell you how much I have spent in security, I even give, give, I've given like 14 vehicles to Nigerian police, donated over the years just to secure this place. But even in Abuja here, I have. You understand me? That's how, how security is very, very important to mm. me. But, but listening to you, Senator, yeah. I mean, it, it, it sounds like insecurity has become an intractable problem it is not. in Emo State. It's the government. A and I am wondering what kind of peace settlement you would be able to arrange, not just with the unknown gunmen. There are also the disgruntled element. I mean, you've got IPOM yes, and so on and do, so forth. Yes. And I'm wondering easy. what kind of peace settlement you would be able to arrange if you became I, I governor was, and how you there. would cope with the responsibility mm. of reducing what is clearly a very high level of disenchantment. No, Charles, there are no jobs. Charles, you don't know what the Igbo boy goes through. Charles, in this country, this country is skewed against them. They don't get employment. If you go to Nigerian army, if you go to customs, go to immigration, they're not there. They're yeah, but it's not them. just the southeast, I'm is it? I'm I mean, the north is ravaged by poverty know, and I'm unemployment I'm and every of part of this country. Look, go, right. do, check the statistics, what I'm telling you. Go and check the statistics, Charles. It's there to wait for everybody to see. And then you see graduates who are unemployed, who become taxi drivers. Hmm? Then every one kilometer, Charles, you have a police checkpoint. You have an army checkpoint. Do you understand? They don't even let them trade. Extortion everywhere. Everyone, some places it's not even up to one kilometer. So you wonder what they are doing. You, fro, fro, you see this checkpoint here. Yeah? Just you look just down the road, you see another one. Can you tell me what the hell they are doing? Extorting these people to death. So. You see, that's one of the reasons. And then the hunger is so much. Yeah, but that's... Uh, that, Even uh, workers. I mean, uh, uh, workers who have not been paid right. salary for years. Some would concede some of the points that you're making. But the argument that some people make, which I see a measure of plausibility in, 
is that there is a responsibility on the part of state governments in the Southeast to try and ameliorate some of these problems. That's what I'm saying. I said there is absence of governance, Charles. It's the government. That's what I was saying. Because, Charles, tell me, please, is there rocket science to create these jobs for these people? Look, even local government autonomy alone, if you give, if you observe local government autonomy according to the constitution and allow local governments to get their revenue untouched, Charles, they will create Eco the economic activities in the rural areas. Just let me ask you a question. How can you have a, a democratically elected councillor in every ward and strangers will come into that location and they wouldn't know that somebody has come in who they don't know their source of livelihood or what they do or where they come from? It's impossible now. It, doesn't, it can't happen. But you don't have that for years now. You've never had that. So before, when you had autonomy of local government, Chairman used to give contracts, small, small jobs, clearing of road, repair. Look at, go to, go to schools, Charles. Children are studying without, if, no furniture. The wind, no windows, rain will come, it will be coming in. Some of them don't have roof. The condition in Imo State is horrible, it's deplorable. But of course, analyzing the problems is actually easy, isn't it? I mean, trying to find innovative solutions to address those problems is much harder. How much of a hub of creativity and innovation and solutions that will make a real difference are you as no, an alternative? No, I've, I've, I wanted to paint the picture mm. of the situation on ground for you to see why Imolites are Hungry. You mentioned, you asked me how I'm going to unseat PDP and the APC. That is what they have brought on the people. So the people are praying for labor to come and bring a change. Now, let me tell you how I'm going to solve these problems. First of all, immediately I become governor, which I'm going to be. I will inaugurate a caretaker committee for six months, giving me time to set up a, 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 a viable electoral agency that will deliver the most, the, sorry, the freest and fairest election in black Africa. Now, I will have elected local governments with full autonomy. Now, if you see, I have some, um, I've been preaching a rule in the Southeast over the last 15 years. I have billboards in every senatorial zone in the entire Southeast. What I've been saying is, we will need vigilantes. Every policing is local. That's why I have abroad, I have sheriffs, I have local police and everything. I will create the first bill I'm introducing to the house is the vigilante bill. So that every local government will employ 30 armed vigilante that will work with police, that will work with uh, civil defense, that will work with DSS. Every local government has police, has DSS, has civil defense. But in Nemo, they don't exist. So I will do this to secure the place. But there is still hunger. Do you know what I, I have even sent a proposal to Ohaneze Ndibo? All these forests, I create, I used an example. I set an example in my village after I spoke to Ohaneze about it. I came to a swampy area that is a forest where we suspected that these unknown government will be hiding. I moved in all my construction equipment. I turned that swamp into arable land. Now I have there, I have a massive agro hub that can employ 2,000 in my village. I'm going to replicate this in every local government in Imo State. I'm going to turn all those forests with uh, PPP. You, I, I've even arranged the funding. The fund, do you know that the people who borrow these intervention funds that come in here, it's foreigners that borrow it, Charles. Indians, Lebanese, these are the businessmen who assess it. Because these governors, they don't care. You understand me? It's only very few Nigerians assess this. And that. So I will now assess all of them to create these agro hubs. Now, let me ask you, don't you remember the good old days with palm oil, palm tree? That was the, 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 that was the thing that was ending Nigeria foreign exchange at the time. And we even the Malaysia that came here and collected palm seedlings. That the biggest we even import from them now. I want to turn that around. 
We are creating ag hubs in all the autonomous communities. Palm tree hubs. They will plant 50,000 palm trees. We'll give them 10,000 seedlings a year for five years. That's the program. Plant it and they will create processing zones. Maybe in each federal constituency, we have a processing zones, PPP arrangement. You can't imagine the level of employment this will generate, Charles. Thousands of, uh, of workers will be. People will be coming from other states to mm. get employment in Imo State. And we're also creating immediately six industrial hubs. You know, a lot of people, they are known for pharmaceuticals all over Nigeria, West Africa as a whole. They control the pharmaceutical industry. Okay, now we are creating a pharmaceutical hub in Olo, creating an oil and gas hub in uh, Ohaji Ebema. We are creating an agri hub. You know, there's already no worry. There's a, we are, because first for the first one year, we are going to have 247 power because without power, we can't do anything. We have, we have uh, um, the gas companies in Imo. We have our third largest producer of gas. You understand? So they owe us some obligations, the gas companies, that we can capitalize on, generate our own electricity. You know, you know, Buhari signed it into law before he left. So we are working on that already. We have three different groups who are ready to move in immediately and provide us this light. Now, in a, a Timo airport, we have an, in, an international cargo airport licensed since Mbakwe. No governor has activated it. I tried to do that during Jonathan as a private citizen when Senator Hope Zorima was chairman of aviation in the Senate. I approached him for help, came to the governor, nobody helped. You understand? Uh -huh. So instead, I, the whole land, all the land around it has been sold, and, but I have, I have surveyed the area, area surveyed. I have plans, I have turned that place into a big, one of the largest cargo airports in West Africa. Well, it sounds exceedingly ambitious, the things that you're talking about. Yeah. I'm wondering how much the P2B factor is rubbing off on, on, on what you're doing and helping to inspire not just you, but, but the people, because I mean, you know, you, you've got ordinary people um, who are living in Emo State um, in, in the midst of a, sort of a combination of frightened, distrustful, and worried about where the next meal is going to come from. I mean, all this that you're saying sounds, you know, very, very nice, but I'm wondering how much the P2B factor and all that is helping to authenticate, because people have to believe in what you're saying. No, 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 they know me. And then, with, that, that's why I followed P2B. I, I left politics. It's because P2B happened somebody that I think we think alike. Do you understand? That's why I joined a Labour Party. That's why I followed P2B. P2B is the only one of the smartest human beings I've ever met. And this discipline is unbelievable. That's why I followed, I joined Labour Party. Because I want to work with a man like that. Already, these are things I've been doing as a private individual. So my people know that. That's why they follow me. And you understand me? Mm. And then P2B's influence is supporting me a lot, is helping me a whole lot, is, is giving them a lot more confidence. A lot of people didn't know me before now because I don't talk about myself. It's all my friends that know what I have done over the years. You know, so now that I've come into the open, people like, ah, wow, we didn't know it was. Some people thought I was a forward niner <laughs> because, of, <laughs> because of my lifestyle, you know. <laughs> That's why they could But, but you want to dispel that rumor. No, you are not of, a forward Of course, niner. I've never been. They, they now <laughs> okay. know. I say it everywhere. I tell them who I am. Yeah. And they know what I have done over the years. You understand? Uh -huh. Everything. That, I'm the one. I've built a building health center in every local government in Nigeria, which they say they have eaten over 400 billion in Nigeria. So I was asking them, how can I steal? And I've been fighting governors in court over the years, and they have not jailed me since then. That is not possible. You understand? So, and in Imo State, can you imagine, Charles, the wickedness of some of these people? I have built and equipped 26 health centers. If 27 to 100, it's not completed now. And they have not activated any. It was only the first governor that did something about it was Osho. Anyway, let me just concentrate on my state now because one day I'm going to talk about that project and tell Nigerians what these men have done. 
Right. But yeah. let's move slightly away from the campaign hustings and insecurity and, you know, hunger and all the rest of it as the election approaches and explore what drives you as a person more generally. I wonder if you might fill us in on that aspect of your um, world to help us and the people of Emo State better know you and understand you because you just said that a lot of the people don't actually know you very well. Oh, Charles, you know, what drives me, what really drove me into this governorship in the first place has nothing to do with personal ambition. I never wanted to be a governor. But I was watching this man, the governor of Imo State. I don't know what he's trying to become. The moment he became governor, heads started falling off their body in Imo State, flying off their body. I'm telling you, you see, there were born houses. Okay, let me ask you, Charles, please. Take which society where you have police, we have DSS, if somebody commits a crime, you investigate and catch the culprit. That's what is, that's how it's supposed to be. Not you go, you raise people, some burn people's houses, they go, they shoot, shoot outside, kill people. How? Where does that happen? Then, I watched. Ararume was made, I'm not a member of APC, but I was watching what was happening inside the APC. Then I wasn't in any political party until a bit of it happened. Ararume, since Ararume was made chairman of um, NMPC, I'm from my senatorial zone, from where I come from. So it would have impacted on us positively. The governor truncated it. Uh, I watched. The, uh, um, during this uh, the, uh, uh, governorship election, Andy Uba wanted to run for governor in Anambra State under APC. This governor was supposed to be in charge of the, um, his campaign. Only Arundi will come here and tell you what happened to him. Same thing happened in Enugu, Ab Eboni, Abia. Same person, one man. So that he will be in total control. As I watched the trend. He wants to be in total control of the entire southeast. Even look at Credo, okay, uh, Roger Sokrocha, who has been two term governor, strong member of APC. I hear there's a rumor that he wanted to be a uh, 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 minister. The same governor truncated it. I hear on Hakim the same thing. This the rumor flying all over Imo State now. You're such one person. Yeah. Well, so I, I, I don't want. I don't. Yeah. I, I decided that look, so this man has to go. I have to say yes. that in 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 the interest of fairness and balance, which is something we always do on yes. our lives. News. Yes. I mean, we can't. Um, no, you have right of reply. Yeah, yeah. We're, right we're, we're giving them, the yes. Hopus or Dima people, the right to kind yes, of reply the right to, to reply. the things that yes. you said. And obviously, we can't authenticate mm. the things yes, that, I am the sure allegations that, yes, that you're you are, making. Yes. Mm. But we, we've got just a couple of minutes or so left. Yes. And um, thank you for uh, coming in to talk to us. In the final analysis, mm -hmm. what is your message to the people of Emo State? And how much influence do you think that message might be? be able to carry in the weeks to come as the elections approach? I am assuring the people of Imo State that I'm going to take over Douglas House after 11-11. And I'll, look, in the north, Boko Haram, they were brought out of the forest, reintegrated into society. Some of them even were uh, drafted into the army, into the police. I'm, I've been calling on my brothers, these Sibo boys who are living in the forest, not to kill their fellow Igbos. It doesn't make any sense. They should have patience. It's just two months. And all these things that I talked about will start happening. Then I will call them. I will talk to them. I will know their grievances. I will reintegrate them into society. You understand me? All these agricultural ventures we are going to, they will, they will need workers. They will need security men. We even create vigilantes. The same way they were, the program was reintegrated into the army and police. I integrate them into vigilante uh, groups and into all these farm settlements and all this. So that there will be peace in Igbo land. And with the local government autonomy, Charles, everyone will be calm. You, you look at the home and then we pay workers' salary. People are suffering, Charles. People don't. 
They call them ghost workers just because they don't want to pay them salaries. People who have been any salaries over the years, sorry, they've become ghost workers. And there you see them walking. You see them. <laughs> I don't know how to describe them. You see human beings called ghosts, ghost workers. And their life, they feed, they talk, they eat. They're hot. They're hunger. It's terrible, Charles. You know, I'm assuring them that all this will change. This is what I have been doing for a living by myself as a private individual, private citizen. Scholarships. I, I've done so many boreholes. Transformers. I, this thing government is supposed to do, Charles, I'm doing them. Okay, do you know that? Oh, let me give you an example of what, what I'm saying. Very briefly. We've got about yeah, 30 yes. seconds. Okay, sir. The person who is suspected to have dynamited that police station was accused of murder, arrested, detained, was about to be sent uh, to court so that he'll be jailed for murder. The Attorney General of Imo State released him. They should go and verify, Charles. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have to say, as I mentioned previously, that in the interest of balance, um, the, yes. uh, the government of Imo State has a right of reply. But I want to thank you very much indeed, Senator Ethan. Thank Achonu. you very much. He is the INEC recognized governorship candidate of the Labour Party in Emo State. Thank you very much. Thank indeed. you very much, Charles.